Hello everybody, it's Niklas and welcome to this new video on Sharp 3D. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can work with constraint in the sketches. So Sharp 3D, CAD software and 3D modeling software at the same time. You can work on a tablet, but you can also work on a desktop. In this example, I'm working directly on laptop with the desktop uh, versions. Subscribe to my YouTube channels if you like my videos. I can also invite you if you are interested by more. First link on the description. This is a complete course that I propose about Sharp 3D. So if you want to learn this software, if you want to master all the different tools step by step, everything is explained in details with different trainings of uh, on 3D models at the end of the course. It is on the first link on the description below. So let's uh, start. So when you want to create a sketch, you need to click on sketch here. And uh, directly you need to select a work plane. I can go on my top view and directly I can work on this work plane, as you can see. Uh, you have constraint settings directly on the right here. Why it's not possible to click on anything? Because you need to create, for example, a directly drawings. I can create a first line, for example, here, and I can create, press escape, and create a second line. Click on my line tool just here and enter the values that I want. Uh, at the same time, let's create a rectangle here, change for diagonal. And I can create a rectangle with two values just like this. So something important to understand. When you click on a segment or a point, if I click on this point, I can find what type of constraint on the right I can apply. Here I can apply only a log constraint. If I select this line, what type of constraint I can apply on this line? Horizontal, vertical or lock or create a construction line from this line. So if I click on horizontal, vertical, now, take a glance, I have a horizontal constraint. You can find this element here. And if I drag and move, you can see I have a horizontal constraint. And not here, here I can move like this, but here I have a horizontal constraint. If I want to put this line vertical, I can click here, activate vertical. This is what I can do with, with this one. Now, if you select, for example, two points, you select this point, shift, you select this second point. What I can do with these two prints about constraint, I can apply symmetry constraint or coincident constraint or log constraint. Let's apply coincident. And now I created a link. And as you can see, I have vertical constraint here, horizontal constraint here, and I have a, a coincident constraint on this area also, just like that. So this is something important that you need to know. Um, if, for example, I select, I create, an, I create, for example, another, if I create a circle, I can create a circle here with 10 millimeter. And now I would like to create a line, for example, on this direction. Oops. Um, I'm going to show you something little different. I'm going to select everything and create a first circle on this print. And create a second circle on around this area, just like that. So now the thing that I can do, it's to create a first line around this area and create a, a second line around this area, just like that. And if I just press escape, here I can drag and move. I don't have any constraint on this line. I don't have constraint. This line, I don't have constraint. If I want to apply a coincident constraint, if I click on the first line, press shift, click on this first circle, what I can do? I can apply tangent, a tangent constraint. I can click on tangent and now I have linked this one. So it means if I drag and move here, the line will follow, as you can see. And let's repeat the process. I can click on this line, click on this circle and activate tangent. And let's repeat the process here. Click on this circle, click on this line. What I can do? Tangent. Click on this circle, click on this line. And what I can do? Tangent, just like that. So now, if for example, I move this one, everything will move because 
I have created a link with different type of tangent, just like that. And so this is why it is important. If I zoom a little bit, take a glance, we have also a link. If you click on this point, what I have, I can only apply log features. If I click on this line, what I can do horizontal, vertical. So I can put horizontal, maybe vertical here. But if I put this one and I click on this line, I put horizontal, vertical. Now the size of the circle will change. So it depends also because you can add also dimension on your circle. And you can be over constrained. So it means if I click on the diameter of the circle, I apply, for example, 50 like this. And now I click on this one, I apply horizontal, vertical, and this one horizontal, vertical. Um, this one will be, will change at 50 millimeter. If I um, just come back and activate a value here, just to show you again, like 30 millimeter. Uh, now, if I click on this line, horizontal, vertical, click on this line, horizontal, vertical, this constraint will conflict with existing one. Because I have 30 mm here, 50 mm here, it is not possible to apply a horizontal constraint on this one. Um, so let's uh, just come back a little bit here. Um, I think it was great to apply 30. I can apply yeah, just 30 millimeter and just validate and here I can extend on this direction and the line will follow and at the same time you can also create coincident constraints so you can click here click here and I can apply coincidence I can click here click here and I can apply um, does I have coincidence here shift shift uh, I don't have coincidence in this example it's a little strange um, if I click on this circle, click on this line, maybe I can disconnect first, click here, click here, and I don't have this coincident constraint. Let's come back with something little simple. It was just to show you an example. If I uh, just create another line here, just this one, and for example, this one, and I create another line, for example, here to here. I have other type of constraint. If I want to have 90 degrees between this line and this line, I can press shift, select these two lines, and I can activate, for example, perpendicular. And now, as you can see, I can keep perpendicular. Now I would like to have this line and this line parallel. So I click on the first, press shift, click on the second, and I can work with parallel. And now I will have these two lines parallel, as you can see. And why not to link this point to this point? I can press shift, activate coincidence and now I have this type of render. So this is the type of things that you can do with a constraint. If you want to remove a constraint, just click on one of the constraints. You can press delete on the keyboard. I can click here, press delete on the keyboard and now I have freedoms because I remove this constraint. I can also remove the coincident constraint here and now I can drag and move this point. So it's okay, we are going to stop here for start with constraint in Sharp 3D. If you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can let like also on the video. And first link on the description, my complete course here is just tutorial to start with a software, uh, why you can use this software, what is, it, what is the interest of this software. If you want a complete course, it is first link on the description. I explain everything in details, step by step, with a complete structure and different trainings also at the end of the course. For our next video, see you. Ciao, ciao.